Welcome to Lord and Richards Radio, a program that will enable you to become more financially independent and prosperous from a biblical point of view. Tune in each week to learn how to prosper through good markets and bad. Now, here's our host, Colin Richards, Denver's biblical investment advisor. Hi, friends. I'm glad to be with you today on Lord and Richards Radio. I'm Colin Richards founder and president of Lord & Richards. We're a team of advisors who are dedicated to helping people just like you retire financially independent. And we're doing that every single day. On this show, we're discussing investing and planning from the perspective of key biblical principles, a little bit different way of looking at money. We also talk about how to use methods and strategies that will enable you to prosper through both up and down markets. And that's so important in today's volatile world. I'd love to chat with you. My team and I would love to help you talk to you about your specific questions regarding retirement and saving and investing from a biblical point of view. Just pick up the phone and give us a call at 720-372-0400. Again, that's 720-372-0400. I'd love to chat or check us out on the web at lordandrichards.com. Well, today we're going to be picking up the conversation that we started last week on the subject of the coming tax storm. And the title was Render Unto Caesar. And uh, last week we based our time-tested advice upon the Word of God. Matthew twenty-two twenty-one says, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's And our principle that we extracted from that was, yes, we're to pay our taxes. We're absolutely supposed to obey the law. We're supposed to be good citizens. We're expected to contribute to uh, what the government does for the, the health and welfare of our country. All of those things are correct. So pay the taxes you owe, but preserve what's God's. Pay the taxes you owe, but preserve what's God's. Because a lot of times this verse tends to get quoted halfway through, render unto Caesar, right? And we forget to say, but also render unto God the things that are God's. And of course, that's our life, our time, our talents, our treasure, all of it. But specifically here, the application I'm making is that, yes, the taxes need to be paid to your local, your state, your federal government. Those things are Caesar's, right? We live here under the laws of this land, but... If we overpay those taxes, if we aren't careful stewards such that we fully understand the law or work with people who do and therefore avoid overpaying taxes, if we don't do that, we're going to wind up taking what's God's and giving it to the government. And that was never what our Lord intended when he said this phrase. He didn't intend for you to take what could be used for the kingdom of heaven, for the glory of God through your life. And to give that to the government. That's really not his intent. His intent is, no, don't do that. Give to Caesar what belongs to him and not one cent more. And that's our philosophy here at Lord & Richards. We want to help you become financially independent. And part of that process of developing a comprehensive plan is to have a written tax plan. Do you have that? Do you have a written tax plan? You say, well... You know, I I pay my taxes, I contribute to my 401k, etc. Well, a tax plan goes far beyond that and analyzes the brackets we expect you to be in this year and the next and the following and even at your death to try to make sure we don't pay more than we should in taxes. Here's why we do what we do. Most people we meet, just like you, are worried that events out of your control, things like tax changes, tax law changes, are going to harm your retirement. So what we do at Lord & Richards is we build a plan for you to achieve financial independence and enjoy retirement without worry. Let me say that again. We build a plan for you to achieve financial independence and enjoy retirement without worry, without worry about what's going to happen to the tax laws. You say, well, I'll always be worried about that. Well, did you know that you can build a plan and you can implement a plan that helps you be insulated from future tax law changes? We're going to be talking about that today. 
So today's subject, again, is render unto Caesar, the idea being don't overpay taxes, but certainly pay your taxes, making sure that the resources God has entrusted to you are used for what they're intended, his glory, his kingdom. And so we're talking about what's going on right now where Caesar has gotten a little greedy, and we see that we are very likely to see some drastic and dramatic changes in our tax code. We talked about that last time. Uh, There's an effort afoot to repeal the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. That was a big boon to American citizens as well as to businesses, and that is going to expire anyway after 2025, reverting us back to the old higher tax brackets. Wow. Eliminating the step up in basis. So you inherit a home, now you got to pay taxes on it. You inherit some stock, you got to pay taxes on it. Raising the corporate tax rate. You may not be too worried about that if you're not a business owner, but let me just say that gets passed somewhere. You might assume that all the executives are going to take a pay cut. It's not really how it works. Okay, what's likely to happen is that's going to get passed on in consumer prices and we're going to see inflation and um, a, uh, an additional layer of audits, right? Enforcement designed, you know, the government considers enforcement and investment. They spend a certain amount of money to pay their auditors. They get back that money fivefold, tenfold, whatever it is. So the government is not sitting still on this. And we talked about why last time. Out of control government spending, these big programs, stimulus packages, et cetera, are building up a debt load that we just can't bear. And we're going to have to raise taxes. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. So the question is, what can we do? Well, the first thing is to develop a macro mindset regarding taxation. What do you mean, Colin? Well, a micro mindset would be the opposite of that, where we're talking about short-term focus. Okay, I'm going to contribute to my 401k or my IRA so that I get a tax deduction now. Well, let me ask you a question. Do you really need a tax deduction now? Well, you say, I'm, I'm trying to save taxes, right? Well, but wait a minute. If taxes are low right now, are you sure that you want to sacrifice future for present? Macro for micro. Macro steps back and says, wait a minute. If I'm saving taxes now while taxes are low, is that going to come home to roost later when taxes are high? Yeah. So micro view focuses on the current year taxes. It tends to be the way our tax preparers and CPAs think. A macro view focuses on the lifetime taxes you're going to pay. Well, what does that look like? And what are we going to do when the tax rates changes? Are, are we prepared? Do we have money that we can pull during those years that's not taxable? And on and on. And that becomes the focus of a written tax mitigation plan. Do you have one? You know, it's interesting. Ronald Reagan had a plan. <laughs> I don't know if it was written down or not, but back when he was in his early days of making movies, he would make about $100,000 a movie. And he only did two movies a year. He said, well, I mean, back in the in the old days, that was probably a lot of money. It sure was. So he only worked about six months out of the year. But see, the post-war era, the top tax bracket was 90%. FDR was proposing 100% over $25,000. <laughs> so in that high tax environment, Ronald Reagan figured out, okay, I'm going to just cut it right up to the edge of this top top brackets because I'm going to give away 90% of anything I make over 200 anyway. Fascinating, fascinating. Um, That is a plan of sorts. (laughs) Our idea at Lord & Richards is not for you to have a plan that results in you, you know, having to cut back on your opportunity to earn income. As a matter of fact, we have a process called a financial independence review. And that just begins with connecting with us over the phone, chatting with us about your current situation and how we might be able to help. And that financial independence review has helped so many people take a step forward in their retirement security so they could enjoy retirement without worry. So if you've just jumped in, you're listening to The Lord and Richards Show. I'm Colin Richards, Denver's Biblical Investment Advisor, and I and my team would love to help you to chat with you over the phone about how you can take control of your financial future through our Financial Independence Review. Just pick up the phone and give us a call at 720-372-0400. Again, that's 720-372-0400.
I'd love to chat. Or check us out online at lordandrichards.com. So we're continuing our discussion on the title of our show here, Render Unto Caesar, the idea being pay your taxes, but just what you owe, not more, so that you can also render unto God what is God's. And we're talking about the current threat to that, which is what we're calling the coming tax storm. And what do we mean? Well, this buildup of expenditures has resulted in an attitude of government, which is almost universally now moving towards higher taxes. So here are some strategies and workarounds that you can implement today, right now, if you want to avoid the coming tax storm or at least mitigate the effect of the high likelihood of rising taxes. So the first is you need to develop a plan to deal with what we call tax volatility, tax volatility. Now, tax volatility is just another form of volatility that our clients face at Lord & Richard. So we're helping people like you every single day to address volatility in your plan and in your portfolio. And most of the time when we talk about volatility, we're talking about market volatility, right? Oh, stock market's down, stock market's up. Oh, it's back down. Oh, it's back up. That's volatility. Well, what we're talking about here isn't stock market volatility, it's tax volatility. Tax volatility simply means that the government keeps changing the rules. The government keeps changing the rules, leaving those who are trying to build a plan for their financial future on the back foot at a disadvantage, right? Because today's plans for tax mitigation may not work tomorrow. So a tax plan and a financial independence plan must include a tax volatility plan. You need to look at it this way. You need to look at your assets location as well as its allocation. (laughs) <laughs> you say, Colin, now you're being confusing. Well, let me define the terms. Allocation, asset allocation is something you hear a lot, and it's involved together with the principle of diversification. You know, we use all these big fancy words, but to diversify means just to spread out your investments among different opportunities, which means to buy stock, to buy bonds, to buy real estate, gold, so forth. 16 16 different asset classes we can diversify among using the principle of allocation, asset allocation. But asset location is different. Asset location means what types of accounts, taxable, tax-free, tax-deferred, what types of different accounts should I have so that I'm prepared for the constant changes in taxation. So there are four general buckets that become your sources of income during different kinds of tax environments. Taxable accounts. Those are accounts that are taxed as we go. Tax deferred accounts. Those are accounts that are taxed when you withdraw money. Capital gains taxed accounts. These are investments that are held either short or or long-term, they're not in IRAs or 401ks, they're not tax-deferred, they are taxed based on a separate system of taxation called capital gains. Short-term capital gains currently are taxed at ordinary income rates, so it's pretty much like a taxable account. Long-term capital gains are favorable, topping out at 20% currently, but we expect the government to start tinkering with that too. So we need a bucket for those kinds of assets. And then the one that's most um, underrepresented is the tax-free bucket. The tax-free bucket is my favorite bucket. People ask me all the time, Colin, should I be contributing uh, the maximum amount I can to my 401k? And that depends. But here's my short answer. If, If your favorite kind of money, like mine, is free money, Okay, contribute up to the max. That's my favorite kind of money, free money. So you put in a dollar, your company puts in a dollar or 50 cents, whatever it is. So contribute as much as you need to get the free money in your 401k, but not more than that because my next favorite kind of money is tax-free money. And contributions beyond that should go into tax-free vehicles. Now, sometimes you can do that in a 401k. It's called a Roth 401k. But most of the time, we're going to have to take that money out and put it in another tax-free vehicle. 
So four buckets again. This is your tax volatility solution. Number one, a taxable bucket. Just normal money growing, taxed as it goes, 1099 interest and so on. Tax deferred money. This is money that we hold in the vehicle and it's not taxed till we take it out. When would we use that? Well, probably when tax rates are low, right? Or when we can manage our income down to a a low reported level. I'm not talking about living in poverty. I'm just talking about such that your your very carefully prepared tax plan results in a year or two or five or 10, whatever, where your reported income is low. You got enough to live on, but you got low income in those years. And so you can take out some of your tax deferred money and it's taxed at a lower rate. You say, oh, I thought, I thought when I retired, you know, my, all my brackets would be lower because now I'm retired. No, that's not true. As I meet with my clients, just like you every day, they're continuing to live their lives. And here's a quick principle. When do you spend the most money during your working years in terms of days of the week? Well, I find most of my clients say, well, that tends to be on weekends. Well, guess what retirement is? It's a lot of weekend. (laughs) And so often my client's budget goes up for things like travel, gifts, and so on, hobbies. So we don't want to assume we'll be in a lower bracket. That is the failed assumption behind most 401k tax deferred giving or contributing. And that includes your IRAs. So we call it a tax bomb because depending on what rates are, when you take it out, you might be paying more than when you were working. So we're really not sure of that. So we need to have a bucket that offsets that, and that's a bucket called the capital gains bucket. And when we withdraw money from this bucket, money that has accumulated what we call long-term capital gains, we're subject to traditionally a much lower bracket. If you're a high earner, capital gains taxes are favorable compared to ordinary income taxes. So we need that bucket during periods of high taxes. Or, once again, my favorite kind of money is free money. My second favorite kind of money is tax-free money, and that's the fourth bucket. If you can get ahead of the game, you could even, now I'm talking to my listeners now who are in their 50s and younger, maybe early 60s, but if you can get ahead of the game, you can actually take your entire retirement off of the tax radar. That's right you could literally have a tax-free retirement. We do this all the time. How do you do that? Well, you start early. And if you're you're not early, but you've still got a little bit of time before retirement, you can convert taxable assets to tax-free. We'll talk about that more later. So there's a lot of options, but it starts with getting this set up right. You want these four buckets, taxable, tax-deferred, long-term capital gains, and tax-free money. Now, what traditionally are is in each of those back buckets? Well, taxable, that's your pension income, short-term gains, stock dividends, and so forth. Your tax-deferred bucket, that's money that comes out of your IRA, your 401k, your 403b, your 457, or annuities. Then you've got your long-term capital gains. This is money that's not in IRAs that's held more than 12 months. And then your tax-free sources, those are things like municipal bonds, Roth IRAs, and even, surprisingly, the cash growth in a life insurance policy. So when taxes are down, take from your tax-deferred bucket, your IRA, right? Low tax rates, take that money out. It gets taxed at a lower rate. Taxes are high, volatility. Go ahead and realize some long-term capital gains from your taxable, uh, your tax-free sources. So those are the four buckets, If you're just jumping in, this is the Lord and Richards show. I am Colin Richards, president and founder and leader of a wonderful, compassionate team of advisors who's helping people just like you every single day to not only get retired, but to stay retired. And we're doing that through our our process called a financial independence review. And I would love to sit down with you. And that's going to include our subject today. You're going to need to talk about taxes. It's a big deal. It's the number one expense in your retirement. So I'd love to visit with you. I'd love to have my team visit with you. And we can do that right on the phone. Just pick up the phone and give us a call at 720-372-0400. Again, that's 720-372-0400. I'd love to chat or check us out at lordandrichards.com. 
So in our final segment on this subject of the coming tax storm, making sure we render unto Caesar according to our Lord's words, but also unto God what is God's. So not overpaying our taxes, but developing a plan to mitigate those taxes, to reduce them, all right? So we're going to have to understand how to develop a plan. And that's really part of our financial independence review process. Once you have your four tax buckets in place, and we'll show you how to do that and how to get it set up. Now you're going to have to look at tax brackets, tax brackets to determine, well, which one should I be pulling from now? And what steps should I be taking right now to take advantage of what we're calling a window of opportunity for conversion? And I'm not talking about a religious conversion. I'm talking about a tax conversion. Okay. So for starters, tax brackets have gone dramatically down for both married and single filers. You see that difference the most, I think, for married filers. So for you single filers, this is important. You still have opportunity. You still have opportunity, but it's even more critical for you to have a plan so that you slice these tax brackets really thin, right up to the line, okay? And we're gonna do that, of course, for our married filers as well. But what's going to happen is these current favorable brackets, some cases amounting to changes in your taxes of thousands and thousands of dollars, that window is closing. Okay, By the end of 2025, it'll be shut. And this opportunity will be gone. So what are people doing right now? Well, here's the goal. We want to get our money moved from forever taxed money, like IRAs, 401k, 403bs, 457s, to never again tax-free money, like Roth IRAs, municipal bonds, and the the cash accumulation in a properly structured life insurance policy. So all of these are opportunities, but you've got to seize them. You've got to begin working on this now. Now, the biggest challenge I see is people just take money and they convert it, let's say from an IRA to a Roth IRA, They pay the taxes today while taxes are on sale to avoid future tax increases. That's all good. But I'm seeing people make very big conversions. And you know what that's doing? It may be throwing them up into the very brackets that they're seeking to avoid in the future. So it makes no sense to convert money now at a high bracket. And the way you control that is you don't over-convert. Now, this takes software. It takes careful planning. And the great news is we do all of this as part of what we do for our clients. We don't charge extra fees for tax planning or any of that. It's part of our financial independence review. And so here's what it looked like. We just did a, uh, a sample. And we had someone with a $500,000 IRA. And these are broad strokes. Okay, these calculations are just designed to give you an idea. But it was a 60-year-old client. Um, We wanted to look at their life from now through age 90. Uh, We put in a 25% hypothetical annual tax liability. That's not unusual if you're earning really good money. And we plugged in an IRA worth about half a million dollars growing at 5%. You say, do you only work with people half a million? Nope, we'll work with people with a million or two. I'm just kidding. We work with folks at all levels of their financial plan. So whether you're just getting started or you're selling a business for millions of dollars, these are the things we eat, drink, and sleep every single day. And this illustration we're setting up with our 60-year-old that has a half million, uh, that half million is growing at 5%. And as you know, they have to start taking money out. The government insists at age 72, you got to start taking money out. So we take those out. Well, what we discovered is the taxes that they will pay over the life of that vehicle during their life is $242,000 on what they're forced to take out. Holy moly. And here's the real clincher. When you pass on to your heirs an IRA or a 401k, you are passing on a tax bomb. Most heirs will liquidate it to pay off their mortgage. And so taxes on death on an IRA of this size, 500,000, growing from age 60 to 90 at 5%, is gonna be 299,000. Wow, 541,000 in taxes. Now compare that with the person who gets ahead of the curve, 
take the same $500,000, take that IRA, convert it today at 25% while taxes are low, you pay $125,000 today on taxes instead of $541,000. Now, this is an ultra simplistic illustration designed to just help us get our brains thinking, right? There's a lot of variables, a lot of variables, but this helps you see. This is one of the steps you can begin to take, and we're not done. We're going to have to go to part three or maybe even part four on the coming tax storm. But in the meantime, I want to help you. Let's have a conversation about how you can develop a written tax plan as part of our financial independence review. We're helping folks just like you every day to get retired, stay retired, without worry. It just takes a moment to chat. Just pick up the phone and give us a call at 720-372-0400. Again, that's 720-372-0400. I'd love to chat or check us out online at lordandrichards.com. Investment advisory service is offered only by duly registered individuals through AE Wealth Management, LLC.